Hi, my name's Dave, and we're going to do a little demo here. Uh, we're going to show how I link my character sheet in D&D Beyond to a game that I'm playing in over in Roll20. So I've shown this before from the GM's perspective, but I wanted to narrow down just on the things that I do to make sure that I've got everything I need to be ready to play my Roll20 D&D game. So over here, I've got my character sheet for Cal. He's a ninth level wizard. He's got a bunch of spells. He's got a couple of attacks. His armor class has to change throughout the game as I do mage armor. Um, but aside from that, he's pretty simple. And it's a good character to start with because it kind of fully shows lots of the features of Beyond 20. Over here, I've got my roll 20 game. Cal is currently, well, he's going to have to deal with Strahd soon, but no spoilers there. So that's my, that's my token right there. Now the GM, every GM has a different way of doing initiative, and that's the first thing you have to think of. So my GM, you know, has my dexterity stat on my character sheet in here, and there's a roll token initiative macro that he's made available for all of us to make sure that works the same way. So you just want to make sure that however you do initiative is worked out with your GM, because that is something that isn't necessarily going to be the same for everyone, and Beyond 20 doesn't really handle that. So over here, I'm going to go to Beyond 20, which is a Chrome extension. I'm going to add it to Chrome, and I'm going to say OK. So as that loads, I'm now probably going to have to go and reload all these D&D Beyond screens so that it understands that Beyond 20 is loaded. And now I've got this extra button here. I've got my settings. It doesn't want to whisper over in Roll20. I say never whisper. I want my GM to see my rolls. What type of roll should it be doing? Uh, and I, I say always roll twice. This creates a left-right split. Um, let me show the difference here. So if I were to say, and I'm going to turn on, since this isn't my game, I'm going to turn on talk to myself. Uh, so I'm going to say if I were to just fire my crossbow, it's going to roll my crossbow here with a 16 to attack. I can see I rolled a 10 plus 6. Uh, and then over here, the damage that it did was 1d8 plus 2. Great. Now, the challenge that I've got is that what if I had advantage you know, uh, in that shot? So having to switch something over here to turn on advantage or to click it twice, and then which damage roll counts, you don't want that. So instead, in D&D Beyond, I go to the settings, and then I say always roll twice. And that's going to create this left-right split so that when I roll my attack, here I got a 21 to attack, and then the second d20, which is over on the right, you only have to look at that if you have advantage or disadvantage. But then the GM, you can just kind of look at it and play as if you would roll two d20s on the table. Very nice. So the next thing to learn is how uh, versatile weapons work. So another thing you can do, say I as Cal know that uh, you know, my quarterstaff is a two-handed weapon. So I roll that, and it's a, it has you know, two attack rolls now. That's good. But then it has a one damage for a d6 and another damage for rolling two-handed. And that's because a quarterstaff is a versatile weapon. It can be used either one-handed or two-handed. So if you know your character rolls out with one specific, like, oh, I'm always wielding that two-handed, you can simplify stuff for yourself by going into Beyond 20, and then going to your versatile weapon choice under your specific character options and say, oh, well, I pretty much always use that thing two-handed. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to do the quarter staff and roll it again. And now it's simplified. Now there's only one damage roll in here. And D&D Beyond takes care of a lot of stuff for you. So I'm just going to spam this roll until I get a critical hit. It's going to take a while. Oh, there's a miss. Big miss. There's a critical hit. So for some reason here, oh, because I've got a really bad strength. Uh, on this wizard, you know, I got zero <laughs> damage on the uh, from from the the actual quarter staff, but the critical hit damage maxed out, so that's good. So um, attacks are pretty simple now. Um, now some character classes have lots of alternate modes, whether you're, you know, a, a, a warrior with uh, you know some kind of uh, you know extra abilities or sharpshooters or other things, so there are there is a way in Beyond Twenty to apply a modifier. So imagine that someone cast Bless on me, so I, now I get an extra D4 to attack. I could go into Beyond Twenty and apply that as a custom dice roll to add. So I'm going to add a one D4 onto all my attacks. So I could go to the crossbow click on that, and now when I mouse over on the crossbow, I can see that it applied an extra d4 
to my attack roll, but now I'm going to have to remember to take it off. And I mean, imagine how mad your GM is going to be if you've been adding kind of with no visual information to say that you were doing it, adding the bless long after the bless wore off. So I don't do this. I don't do this because I don't really trust myself to remember to turn on and turn off things. So I don't really mess with this. Hey, go add extra, you know, dice to attack and go go rat, add extra damage because it's so selective. Uh, or and I always forget to turn it off. So instead, I make buttons for myself using macros. So I would roll my you know my crossbow attack. I'm gonna be honest with you. I never roll a crossbow with this wizard. He's a ninth level wizard. Was he doing with the crossbow? So. You know, I, I would do this, and when the GM says I miss, I go, oh, well, you know, I am blessed right now, so let me see, hey, do I do I get anything extra for being blessed? And uh, let me just roll that a couple times so you can see it pass the talk to myself. So that little bless macro, I created myself by just creating a new macro and then adding it to my bar and then coloring it so that I, you know, when I want bless, I'll, I'll, my muscle memory will remember, oh, bless is the yellow one. But also, there's a bard in my party, uh, so I might need to do some bardic inspiration, right? And then I've got that extra d6 roll. So I, I can have these things that I do a lot. If I do them a lot, I, I don't want to type them a whole bunch, I'm going to add them into my macro bar. All right, you know, it, there's just a lot of integration in between these two things. So as long as the character is named exactly the same, between roll 20, like to the to the individual character, as long as they're named identical on the character sheet as they are over here in D&D uh, &D Beyond, if I modify my hit points, say if I take some damage, it'll it'll modify my hit points over here. And if I take a long rest or something else that you know heals me, and I'm as long as I'm editing in D&D &D Beyond, it'll make the changes in the virtual tabletop. It won't do it in the opposite direction, which is a little bit annoying because I do like the math that they've got here, right? Going, you know, minus 10. It would be cool if that applied over here, but it doesn't. So you just got to remember, whichever one you do, you just got to remember to do that if you want your character sheet to be correct. A lot of my players, uh, when I'm when I'm a GM, a lot of my players just keep, keep it up over here and just ignore this stuff over here. Now, you'll notice that my armor class and my armor class over here are not the same. And that's because Cal is kind of complex when he comes to armor class. If I've got time before a fight or at the beginning of the fight, I will cast Mage Armor. So there we go. I'm going to cast Mage Armor on myself. So I just hit the Cast button uh, and it cast it over here. Great. So now I know how Mage Armor works. It's 13 plus my Dexterity, which is a 2. So my AC should now bump up to 15. So what I do as I go over into here and I remember that my mage armor, I just, I just override my, my AC to a 15 when I've got that up and I've got to remember to take it back down. As a note to my GM, I tend to just, in a secondary stat here, we, we all put our ACs in the blue one, just as a kind of a matter of course, but I have to remember to keep that up. All right, now let's talk about the last thing, which is spells. So over here in spells, uh, you know, I'm a ninth level wizard, so I got a lot and I don't really like, you know, this is a really nice way to go and pull up the rules for it, but sometimes I have to explain it to the other party members because you know they're affected by it, there's a status effect, something like that. So I can always take a spell and I can display it in the virtual tabletop and it'll copy and paste it over here for me. And that's that's really nice. And if it has a, uh, so let's, let's take something like a, uh, you know, a big fireball or something. So I can just display it and say, hey, I'm going to cast a fireball. And someone's, wait, 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 well, you know, what, what's the range on that thing? And I go, well, here's the range. And the nice thing here is that I think it actually lets me, any of the dice math that's in here, I could I could click on the extra dice math. So I could roll that and it would roll the damage for the fireball in there. Or I can just cast it all in one go on this side and it would go and automatically consume a spell slot as well. So there you have it. We've done attack rolls. We've done spells. We've done spells with damage dice. We've uh, adjusted our hit points and armor class. And then, and of course, the one thing this doesn't really handle is initiative, which you have. You could roll initiative, and it would echo it to the screen. Well, actually, it looks like it kind of works. Hey, what do you know? That's a new feature. Oh, critical hit on initiative. Let's do that. So I'm going to have to remember to tell my DM I was messing around with this. Uh, and to ignore why I'm in the initiative count with a 23. Fortunately, we're not in a fight, so it shouldn't affect anything. All right, so there we go. Uh, I hope that was useful to anyone. Anyone has any other questions about D&D &D Beyond or Beyond 20? Uh, this is how I prefer to set it up. 
there's a million ways to do this. Uh, if you've got another way and, and your GM likes it, uh, go for that. Uh, I know a lot of people who use actually the D and D beyond features to integrate in, uh, pardon me, the beyond 20 features to integrate in their character sheet over into discord, um, either using beyond 20 or there's some other apps, uh, that I've messed with. I just, I prefer this cause I like clicking on stuff and discord, um, you know, it, it's very good, but it, it's a little bit more of a text interface. And I find a lot of my characters and or a lot of my players, uh, aren't as quick on text interfaces. So there we go. I hope, hope people like the video next time.